Okay, so I've just finished off running that board through and uh, one point that I didn't mention, didn't want to take the time to show me stripping all of it, so, uh, uh, but I'll mention it. it's very important that you have one of these handy, um, a little push stick. Okay, I always make my own, you can buy them. Um, uh, the main thing is that if you're going to make your own, make it out of a reasonably durable piece of wood, okay, you usually have some sort of scrap lying around. If you don't, then buy one or find some something, something good. Um, you don't want the, your push stick, if you're making it, to be made out of a scrap piece of wood that has a crack in it or anything like that, because uh, from time to time, you will make contact with the blade. It's just the nature of, of uh, uh, using a table saw and uh, why we use a push stick. Um, if uh, now, I'm, with that said, I, I don't want you to think that uh, the idea of a push stick is so that we can touch the, the blade because, uh, you know, uh, that, that's just increasing the chance of uh, some type of hazard. Um, but the reason why we use a push stick is because the material is small, meaning that our hands, you know, or the push stick are going to be getting closer to the blade uh, more so than usual. Okay, so so that that was the one thing, uh, you know, very important that you have this because to get the last strip or two, um, or or even more, I probably start using the push stick around the last three strips. Um, and, uh, you know, I position it however uh, is best for the job, okay, so, so sometimes it's not upright, okay, so sometimes it's not upright like this, okay, it might be sideways, alright, uh, but as you can see, I notch mine a little, and, uh, and that, that enables me to have, uh, you know, a bit of a grip, okay, you can go to a store and see how they make them, and, you know, the shape of them and get an idea. Um, I just run it on the bandsaw quickly so it's comfortable, but I've used just a piece of, uh, you know, rectangle scrap piece of wood before. Um, as long as it keeps this out of the way of the blade, then that's what we're after. So the next step of the process, um, after I've milled up some strips, is I always take my bundle, and this, this is optional, okay? You, you don't have to do this. Um, Every cedar strip boat is going to be slightly different, you know, or a lot different than a previous one or another one, uh, you know, even the same design. Uh, it's one of the nice things about cedar strip boat building. Uh, when we when we go and we look at, uh, you know, Kevlar or, you know, plastic or, you know, other boats, uh, they are, you know, exactly the same there's no difference but with cedar strip we can be creative and we can uh, you know have uh, two of the same model of boat uh, one lighter one darker you know one that's half light and half dark uh, you know patterns within the the stripping uh, there's a lot of options with that okay and uh, so in order to do that what I do is every time I I strip a, a, a board I take my strips and I line them all up. Okay, it's gonna it takes a minute or two, but I take them all, I stand them up. I get them all relatively close and even in length, but it doesn't have to be exact. Okay, let's push my ends in. Get them relatively close. And then I take some, uh, you know, one and a half or two inch wide masking tape and I go around the bundle. 
Now you don't have to make the tape extremely tight. It doesn't have to be holding them all together, you know, going around and, and taping to the tape and not the strips is uh, going to be good enough. It's just a temporary hold. We still need to do the bead in the cove, um, but I'll do it in two spots just to keep that bundle together. And then I count them. So I've got 21 strips here, right on the tape. Okay, so I wrote 21 pieces. And I've already measured it, I know it's 10 feet. It's actually, uh, it's 10 and a half feet or thereabouts, but uh, uh, I always just go in one foot increments. Okay, so I'll just put 10 feet. And now that's done. Okay, the reason why I do that is uh, th there's two reasons, at least two reasons. Um, you don't need you don't need to do this. It's optional. Okay, you can just run off all your strips and then grab them and do the bead and do the cove um, and you know just stack them all up and pull them as you go and and have a very beautiful unique boat when you're finished. Um, I you know I I like to have a, a little bit more order and uh, and choices as I build. So by doing this, when I go to uh, mill the bead and cove, uh, I have an option, uh, especially when I have a helper, sometimes I'll have them uh, keep the strips in order, okay, and then I know the board's going to be exactly as it was when it came off, uh, and by doing that, when I run the bead and cove, I can rotate them end for end, and then the same thing, as long as the the second person keeps them in order then when I strip the boat and in that case I'll I'll mark it uh, book matched so then when I strip the boat I'll take one strip and I'll put it down and then the end which would be uh, very close to a, a matching grain I'll take the next strip and run it off and then I'll build on it so what you get is you, you get uh, like chevron type patterns within the grain working up uh, throughout the whole side of the boat. Uh, it, it doesn't always work out that way but uh, but often it creates a you know a nice appealing line um, and uh, you know it, it's just one of the little tricks that I do. The other reason why we can do this is that uh, uh, just for colors, uh, when we're looking to have a pattern of colors, and you'll see even within, you go and buy all your wood at the same time, some boards will be a little bit lighter and some will be darker. So by keeping them together by board, we can do both sides of the, the boat at the same time and have different colors. So we can have a lighter strip and a darker strip, or I can get two bundles out and have, uh, you know, two strips that are quite a bit lighter and then several that are darker. Um, and then the, the last reason probably would be that by doing this and knowing how long it is, uh, if I continue to bundle them together when I do the bead and cove, as I'm building the boat, if I need a strip and I run the tape measure and see that it's 10 feet long or that it's you know between nine and 10, then I can look at what my bundles are and I can pull strips that are the right size and so by doing that I'm not cutting off two feet and end up with a, a whole bunch of uh, you know two foot or four foot length strips um, in my pile strips I can show you several uh, two or four foot strips um, you know in fact this one that I use to, to get the width of the saw blade um, is a perfect example uh, you know, you, you're building the boat and you need a strip that's six feet long and you have a, all you have is ten, 10 foot strips, well, you end up with a bunch of these, okay? Now, you, you'll use these as well and you can use these in several ways, but obviously we, do, we want to reduce the amount of scrap and we want to get as much out of uh, the material that we have on hand. 
uh, the last thing we want to end up with is, uh, you know, 200 feet of uh, three foot strips at the end of the day. So, yeah, so that's it. And uh, a, li a little tip, and it's up to you whether you follow that. And uh, I'll keep stripping, and probably the next thing that we'll talk about is adding the bead and adding the cove.